Monday, September 12th. I'm writing this because someone told me that it might help, that it's helped other people. It's worth a try. He said that writing, said that writing is a way of is organizing, way of organizing your, thoughts, your thoughts, that it can be a way of giving, giving form, form to how, how you feel. feel. It can lead, it can lead to self-discovery. I'm not, I'm not sure, sure I know I what, know that, what means. that means. At this stage, I'm willing to try anything. Okay, where to start? My name is Jeffrey Carson. I'm 19 years old. I'm in a situation that I can't quite deal with. My mom died last year, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to get over it. She was the center of my life. I didn't really know my dad. He died when I was two. I guess I never realized how much I missed not having a dad until I lost my mom. I'm the only one in the house now. I inherited everything. It turns out that mom made arrangements with the lawyer to take care of everything and leave me comfortable. More than comfortable. I have everything. I have everything, but I have nothing. For now, I'm still in college. I was at a turning point when I realized that there was no way that college was where I was supposed to be. Everything there seemed so pointless. Maybe it was because I was stuck. I decided to withdraw. Try again later. There was a guy in the counseling office, Mr. Comstock. He was the guy who helped me make out my schedule. I had to tell him more than I wanted to. I told him that I had trouble fitting in with people. I couldn't concentrate on my classes. I also told him about mom. I decided that it would be best for me to withdraw from college. He asked me what I would do instead and I told him the truth. I had no idea. He talked me into staying in school at least until I had a plan. He said that I needed to stay in structured environments and at least make myself available to relate to other people. Finally, he told me that with my high school GPA and high test scores would qualify me to be a student tutor. And since he supervised all the tutors, he could get me a job. I didn't need a salary, but he thought that this was just the kind of structured situation that I needed to give me a chance to relate to other people. That's when he suggested that I also keep a journal to record my feelings and attitudes. So, here I am, writing. That's all for now. Friday, September 14th. What am I missing? Why does it seem to be so easy for other people to relate to each other? I tried to rationalize that my problems were because of my mom's death, but I can't blame this on mom's dying. I've always had trouble making friends, and all I'm left with is this nagging feeling, this longing. Writing in this journal isn't helping at all. It just makes me feel worse. I can't see keeping it up. Friday, September 20th. I had a weird experience today. It's worth writing about. I started my tutoring job, which is good. I waited for my first appointment. I was completely unprepared for what came next. 
The prettiest girl I've ever seen came up to the table and asked if I was Jeffrey Carson. There was no other way to describe it. I was totally intimidated. I came this close to saying, no, I'm not. But I said I was and she sat down and we worked on her assignment. Her name is Jill Metz. It's funny, but for as totally paralyzed as I was when she came up to me, once we started concentrating on her assignment, I was okay. I wasn't dashing. I was actually remarkably awkward and clumsy. But I was okay. I can't say that I didn't spend the whole time wishing the session would end, but I was okay. Once we finished the assignment, she just sat there and told me about herself. She told me about the problems she had going to college and living at home. She wanted to get away from home bad. Her mother was so controlling. She doesn't realize how lucky she really is. She kept saying, life is messy. She must have seen that on a poster or a bumper sticker somewhere. But I actually like listening to someone else's problems for a change instead of obsessing over mine. Maybe I'll keep up with this journal a while longer. Monday, September 23rd. I had a good tutoring experience today. A guy named Mitch, I don't remember his last name. His assignment was a little confusing. He got frustrated so easily Naturally, he blamed his teacher. In his condition, he wasn't able to work through the problem. I managed to calm him down and we got through the assignment. It turned out to be pretty easy. Mitch really appreciated the time I took with the problem and the way I got him to work through it. He called me his Obi-Wan. I think we made a good team. I could actually see myself hanging out with Mitch. I don't think I've ever thought about myself hanging out with anyone before. Mitch's girlfriend Gloria stopped by. Gloria. There's a good old fashioned name. He was so at ease with her. And there was something about her. She seemed solid, grounded. She's one of those people who have something that comes from the core. This is the first time I've sensed that about a person, the first time I met them. It makes me admire Mitch even more. September 23rd, night. These are the dark times when I'm home by myself. Just when I think I'm making progress, I'm met with these dark thoughts, this incredible longing. It's like someone put a hook in my soul and I'm just standing here waiting for someone to take it out. Then I realize there's no one there. I look at my desk. I see the clock that belonged to my mother. There's a certain beautiful confidence about it. it. Makes me think of her. That just makes me wish you were here. The gun that my father owned. It's a collector's item. About all I know about it. Strange that the only thing I have to remember my dad by is something so violent. I hate violence. I don't understand how someone could resort to violence. 
I can't sleep. Maybe I'll study for a while. I need to get this down while I'm thinking about it. What Jill said the other day about life being messy I've decided that that's not necessarily September 30th evening I ran into Gloria outside the library literally I was walking and riding at the same time and I almost knocked her over she said she was reading a book, so she didn't see me. She felt as clumsy as I did. I asked what she was reading, and she said that it was a book of poems by Emily Dickinson. I asked her what class she was reading it for, and she said she wasn't reading it for a class. She just loved to read it. A person who reads poetry just because they love to read it. Before I knew it, we were having a conversation right there in the middle of campus. Everyone else was just walking by, hurrying to class. But I was having a conversation with a girl about poetry. She read the poem to me. It was short. Hope is a strange invention. That's all I remember about it. But that's enough. Gloria writes poetry herself. She showed me what she wrote, and it was great. And poetry is a different way like of thinking. I wish I could write it the way Gloria does. The words she chooses are so perfect. And now I know what the expression turning a phrase means. She expresses her thoughts in a way that's so moving and profound. She told me that being able to appreciate poetry is every bit as rewarding as writing it. Gloria belongs to the poetry club on campus. She talked me into going with her next week. I told Mitch how impressed I was with Gloria at our tutoring session today. I couldn't believe Mitch didn't even know that Gloria wrote poetry. He asked me how I knew. I told him about almost knocking her over last week and that she stopped by to invite me to go to the meeting tomorrow. He told me that I'd probably be a real Obi-Wan now that I could recite poetry while I gave him advice. October 15th. When I started this process, I didn't think the journal was a good idea. Over the past month, I've come to rely on it. Maybe too much. I just feel like I need to stop recording my life and start living it. When I should step up and talk to another person, I don't. I just end up writing about it in my journal. I wonder if these entries haven't become a compulsion. October 15th, evening crisis today. I'm not sure what to make of it. I was coming out of the library heading to my sociology class when I saw Mitch and Gloria. They were having an argument. Mitch was accusing Gloria of flirting with someone. I didn't think it was any of my business, so I just started off the class. But before I got too far, I heard Mitch say, he's just a dorky guy who tutors losers. Then Gloria said, he tutors you, 
Does that make you a loser? He was talking about me. When I turned, Mitch pushed Gloria. Then what happened is kind of a blur. How is it that things change so suddenly? Mitch wasn't the person I thought he was at all. Gloria told me that she's been worried about his intense mood changes. She said that she didn't think she would see Mitch again. The same goes for me too, I guess. I probably won't see Gloria anymore either. I wonder if she read the things I wrote about her. It might have been a little gushing. I never realized how I really felt about her until I read what I said. If she read this, I won't be able to face her again. After today, I probably won't see her again anyway. I was supposed to meet her at the poetry club tomorrow night. I can't go now. Did she read what I wrote about her? October 16th, evening. Gloria called me just before the poetry club meeting tonight to make sure I would be there. She wanted to make sure that I wouldn't let what happened yesterday keep me from going. Needless to say, I felt a little awkward. Everyone seemed to have a place there. I don't write poetry. And since I just started reading poetry, I was a little out of my element. But once things got going, I remembered what Gloria said about how appreciating poetry was just as rewarding as writing poetry. And even though these people weren't exactly Emily Dickinson, everything I thought about poetry was being confirmed before my eyes. People using words in ways I've never thought possible. And yet, they were still just people. People with the same kind of insecurities that I have. The difference is, they're out there trying. Not successful all the time, but they're trying. That's more than I can say about myself. But Gloria's different. I'm sure she has the same insecurities that everyone else has, but she doesn't put down her poetry to get praise from the others like some of them do. And she listens to criticism and takes it for what it's worth. She doesn't get hurt by it. She takes everything in stride. Everyone kidded her mercilessly about her beat up old car. The brakes have been going out and she has to use the emergency brakes sometimes to stop. She didn't get upset at all. She just acted like she was proud of it. What makes her so secure? Well, anyway, I think I'll be a regular member of the Poetry Club. Today at my tutoring session with Jill, it became very apparent that she's catching on. I don't know how much longer she'll need to tutor. She's really very clever. I'm amazed that once she figures something out, she writes in a way that reflects who she is. It's not just technically correct. It's more creative than that. She still gets frustrated, but 
I wondered if she wasn't really just trying to get me to compliment her work. I thought about Gloria and told her that she was good and didn't need to put herself down to get praise. Then she told me about her growing up and how she always felt like she had to impress her parents. She said they weren't mean to her, but they made her feel like she wasn't smart enough. Not only her parents, but a lot of people treat her like she's shallow. Somehow, I got the nerve to tell her something I never thought I would have done in a million years. I asked her if she thought that people her age might have been intimidated by her because she was so pretty. That they might be treating her like she wasn't smart because it was easy for them to dismiss her as a dumb blonde. Of course, she insisted that she wasn't pretty, but she did admit that maybe part of her problem was that some people were writing her off because that was the easy thing to do. She seemed to appreciate it when I quoted her and said, Life is messy. She finished her assignment pretty easily. I told her she really didn't need me to tutor her anymore. Then she said something simple, but it really struck me. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was the way she said it. But she got up and said, you really helped me today. Other people I've tutored have said that kind of thing to me. Why was this time so different? November. I can't see Gloria anymore. Why does life have to be like this? Why can't things feel right? Even for a little while. Hope is life's cruelest gift. We were at the poetry meeting tonight. I finally felt like I belonged. People came up to me and asked me for my opinion. Justin came up to me and said that I had a good reputation as a tutor. Elisa asked for my opinion on the poem she's been writing. It made me feel like I've been doing something worthwhile and I've been making friends. And the best feeling I ever had in my life happened when I realized that Elisa and Justin were talking about me and Gloria like we were a couple. Well, I, I was caught off guard at first, but then I looked over at Gloria and she didn't say anything, didn't react at all. Then it occurred to me Gloria and I are a couple? <laughs> when did that happen? And then, right at the moment that I felt like things were working out, what happened next almost seemed like it was on purpose. Like someone knew I was beginning to feel happy and decided it was the perfect opportunity to crush me inside in the most malevolent manner possible. Gloria wanted me to come with her after the meeting. We drove to the side of the road on the other side of the campus. I followed her down a dark path to a little graveyard. She said she wanted me to read some of her poetry to her, like in the Dead Poets Society. Could she be any more shallow? She wanted to read poetry like in the movies. How could she turn out to be so different than what I thought? I told her I had an early class and had to get home. But she insisted. Why did she have to go down there? Finally, I, 
I just told Gloria that I didn't want to be there. That both my mom and dad were dead and that I still couldn't accept my mom dying. I told her that I still lived in the house and kept it just the way it was when she died. Then she had the nerve to spout out something about how when someone close to us dies, we're supposed to give their things to other people. It's all a part of letting go of our grief. She must have learned that in her psychology classes. What I feel is real. It is not academic. I don't need anyone to give me some lecture about the proper way to stop thinking about someone you love. I don't need someone in my life who knows so much about me but can't understand what I'm feeling. How can I be so wrong about her? I'm tired. Thanksgiving. I've been home all day today. I should have gotten out of here. I knew how hard today... I knew how hard today was going to be. But I didn't have anywhere to go. I haven't made an entry since that time in the graveyard. I haven't been to the poetry club since my last entry. Gloria stopped trying to get a hold of me. Now that Jill doesn't need tutoring, she stopped coming to the tutoring center. It's been getting darker earlier. I feel like the darkness has gotten inside of me. I don't know if I can bear the heaviness of these times, and I can't help myself. And there's no one to set me free. November 31st, afternoon. Blindness is never so humbling as when it's forced to depart. Mr. Comstock stopped me in the hall today. He told me that people from the poetry club were calling his office trying to get a hold of me. I asked him what they wanted. They were just checking on me. They hoped that I was planning on coming back before the end of the semester to listen to the final readings before the Christmas break. Mr. Comstock said it sounded like I was relating to people just fine. I told him that I was able to relate to the people in the poetry club, but it was all on the surface. I really haven't been able to have a close relationship with anyone. He told me I was wrong. He said he saw Jill. She said that she tested into an upper level English class. She said that she couldn't have done it without me. She told Mr. Comstock that I didn't only help her with English, but that I helped her with her life. Mr. Comstock told me that that was the definition of a close relationship. Everything Mr. Comstock said slowly sunk into me. I couldn't get a hold of the feelings I was having. Jill and I were close friends. The people at the poetry club were trying to get in touch with me. Then it came to me. I was happy. My problem was I just wasn't letting it happen. I realized that none of this would have been possible 
if it weren't for Gloria. I called Gloria and told her to meet me in the graveyard. Of course, she was totally confused. And why wouldn't she be? She asked me what I wanted to meet her there for. I told her just to meet me there. November 31st, evening. A death blow is a life blow to some. Who, till they died, did not alive become. Who, had they lived, had died. But when they died, vitality begun. I gave a precious gift to Gloria. We talked. I told her everything about my mom and how much I missed her. How I hated her for leaving me alone. How I hurt so much because she wasn't there. I told her that I felt guilty because I kept using her death as an excuse for my inability to live. I almost didn't think I could take it anymore. But Gloria told me not to worry. She said to me, now your life can begin again. December 8th, evening. I got word today that I was accepted into the teaching seminar program at Northwestern next semester. It's only a semester, but it could lead to getting accepted there. This is great news, but it complicates my life. It would mean I'd have to move to Chicago in a couple of weeks. It would be a nice change of pace, but I finally made friends here that I wouldn't want to leave. And Gloria, she's the center of my life now. If she knew about this chance, what would she do? Would she tell me she wanted me to go? Would she come with me? I can't see myself leaving her now. Will there be other chances like this? I've made an appointment to see Mr. Comstock tomorrow. He has all the details about the program. Maybe it's something I don't want to do anyway. December 9th. I went to see Mr. Comstock about the Northwestern program when I got the word. Elisa called and told me that Gloria had been in an accident that she was in the hospital. I don't even remember driving there. I was in the hall outside her room. Elisa and Justin were there. Gloria's parents were on their way from Indiana. Gloria is in critical condition.
She's gonna die. I know it. What kind of coward am I? I'd rather be here writing in this stupid journal instead of What kind of coward am I? I'd rather be here writing in this stupid journal instead of Wednesday, September 12th. I'm writing this because someone told me that it might help, that it's helped other people. kind of a coward am I? I'd rather be writing in this stupid journal instead of never been worthy of you. The world was a better place with you. It's been a bitter place without you. I deserve to lose you. <laughs> 